Can you explain more about why you don't believe hell is torture? In hell, he's talking about Dante. He describes Satan frozen. That's what hell is. Satan is frozen. So that's what I'm saying here. The numbness, it's not a hot pain, but this type of depression is the worst torture. Hell is ease and it's freedom, but is it really? about why you don't believe hell is torture. Okay, so I recommend that you watch episode 10 of Bishop Barron's Catholicism series. Episode 10, it's called World Without End of Bishop Barron's Catholicism series. It's on the Word on Fire app. You can do a week free trial if you need to, or you can find someone who has a subscription and borrow their iPad. I actually wrote a poem on what hell is when I was in depression. That was actually like Catholic theology. Okay, how about I read you guys my hell poem? It's super dark, like I was in severe depression. I know what hell is because I've been there far too many times. It's an aura of fog that covers you slowly, gently, leading you into a comfort and ease. Fatigue, brilliant dreams, a confusion. You want to stop trying so hard. Fading away, thoughts thrown around until you're slowed down all the way. Down into this place, lacking nothing. Stumbling up, grasping light, but you're weak. Just let go. Into this comfort of isolation, rest from striving and surviving, Void of breaking, wanting, loving, encapsulated by freedom from intensity and rejection. You surrender, stop fighting against fog that surrounds all thoughts, that numbs your soul. Fog that seals a heart from pleasure and poison. Your mind dizzying and turning, just stop fighting. You scream and run, remembering flickers of light, of sun, S-O-N. You cry and cry until your strength isn't enough to remember. You break from muddled thoughts into restless sleep of vivid dreams that leaves you exhausted but wanting more. Of a loss of will, a world of dreams. Start breathing in the comfort as you're falling deeper into nothingness. You awake, breathing hard, everything blurred. You drift away, content with numbing that pours into you a comfort from all of this. So the, the, the poem's gonna keep going, but Bishop Barron, he quotes, he's talking about Dante in his, in his series. He describes Satan frozen. That's what hell is. Satan is frozen. So that's what I'm saying here. The numbness, it's not a hot pain, but this type of depression is the worst torture. You drift away content with numbing that pours into you a comfort from all of them. So you're comforted by being isolated from other people and you whisper to the others above that this is the answer but you're caught up with these other minds that live between dark and light, that can't focus, that know it's okay to be free from clarity. You forget how to feel and make this your home and you stay because you can't fight and you want to fall deeper and deeper into this void where no one lacks or needs. We're fulfilled in ending striving. We're fixed forgiven, and loved through forgotten lives. The struggle is over, everything, it's over, and we've won in this unfeeling constant ease. But sometimes there are bursts of light and life and terror and hope, and I feel shame and regret and joy and peace. I don't want to run towards it. So, and that's God's light. So God's light feels like terror 
because you're in such darkness and void and numbness. And so anything light is so freaking painful. But that's God is painful because you've gotten to a point where God is painful. Okay, so talking about the light, talking about God, I don't want to run towards it. So I stay avoiding the pain and shame and change. Change is so painful. That's what purgatory is. I stay where we're shielded from the light, free and safe and unashamed. And I hope you guys are getting from the poem. It's fascinating that everything that hell is promising is also what heaven is promising, but you have to, it's in a completely different way. Does that make sense? So like, I'll finish reading the poem in a second and then explain more. But in hell, you're not, you don't have shame because you don't have to share anything. So you don't have shame. In heaven, you don't have shame because you're forgiven and you had to like be completely naked in front of God. And that's so painful. That's purgatory. But then when you get to heaven, you don't have shame. And it's the same thing where like hell is ease and it's freedom. But is it really? Like heaven is ease, even though it's so much work getting there and it's completely vulnerable. Okay. So I stay in hell where we're shielded from the light, shielded from God, free and safe and unashamed. No one cries, no one fears, or no one breaks. No changes of our souls that tear into us. So it's painful. Change it, changes of our souls that tear into your very being. That's what it's like on earth. Die to yourself. Take up your cross. This life is not your own. It's so freaking painful. God's the most demanding person in the world. It's insane how demanding God is because he wants the absolute best of us. He wants us to flourish the most and it's so painful. So hell is not tearing into your very being. So it's comfortable. I don't cry or feel no pain until I see glimpses of bursts of past joy reawakening. So it is so painful in depression to see other people who are happy and close to God. That was the most painful thing in depression because I felt nothing and I would be at church next to people who are like worshiping and happy and singing these joyous hymns. And then I'm there and I'm so disconnected from the world and I want to just scream and cry and tell people that I'm literally like not alive and like experiencing my brain shutting down, like being buried alive and no one believes me or understands why I'm saying that. And so it's so painful in that state to be around people who are Christians. That's the most painful thing. I don't cry or feel no pain until I see glimpses of bursts of past joy reawakening, reminded of a different life. It's clarity that hurts. The light is far too bright. I don't remember, but I feel and I miss, I miss something of that warmth. So in depression, you have, don't make me cry again, Lizzie. <laughs> so, um... In depression, you have so much memory loss, so you literally forget who you are. And so it's like in hell, you have like these hints of essences. I felt the light before. I don't remember when I crash back down back home, away from myself, away from choices and faults. So this is a thing too, like with purgatory, why it's so painful. And also I recommend reading The Great Divorce. Listen to The Great Divorce audiobook by C.S. Lewis. It's about purgatory. Good night, lovelies. Your poetry is amazing, Lizzie. I wish you all the best. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, it's so easy to, like, slip into hell. And once you're there, it's so painful and hard. And, like, you have to run up to get past that and get to God. So you crash back down home, away from myself, away from choices and faults. There are, this is the craziest thing about hell. There are others here laying down and falling floating i'm fine without asking knowing what they feel and thinking what so you literally don't care about other people you're by yourself and like in the great divorce he's describing hell which is purgatory and there are like millions of miles between everyone because everyone gets in fights with each other and they'll have a neighborhood and then they'll all fight so there'll be only one person living in the neighborhood and they like live like without anyone else because they're all fighting and they don't care about each other. That's what hell is. So there are others laying down, falling, floating, but I'm fine without asking or knowing what they feel and think and want. 
were together but disconnected and i notice glimpses of other souls but we don't but we don't need the others we don't need ourselves and at once i remember that light i was that light i loved the light it was a part of me it lived in me apart from me i'd known a name, a struggle, blood and thorns, shame, but power. The others, we made ourselves feel known. So it's like remembering. Okay, so this part isn't really hell parallel. This is like depression. I guess this would be like if someone was a Christian and they left Christianity and then were reminded of it. Fog falling, surrounding, it turns me away. I don't have strength. So I don't think it's actually this bad. I don't think Satan is like physically like... I don't think it's like actively trying to pull us away from God. Maybe it is. I don't understand how spiritual warfare works. I don't think anyone does fully. But this is like in depression. It's like physically pulling you back into depression. You have no free will. But um, the bursts of light would be like when I was manic. So I would like for a day like be fully alive and like crash back down. Fog falling surrounding. It turns me away. I don't have strength falling into no cares, not thinking, and I lay back down. I don't need to remember. I don't mind to forget. Because I'm manic, I'm not scared. But to, just to be, to be reading something I wrote like two summers ago that I haven't looked at that was just like depression poetry, I would not be like this um, <laughs> open with this and so chill with reading it if I wasn't manic. Lizzie, your description of hell is better than Dante's. Oh my gosh. Um, Cause I've experienced it. And I think that's what is so cool about, at my parish, we only take breath. Oh, you only take the bread. Okay. I was like, what do you mean? You're like, <sighs> like you, the, the priest like breathes particles of the Eucharist onto you. <laughs> like how baby animals, like the penguin will like chew up the food and like put it in the baby. So like the priest is like breathing. <laughs> Okay, so then this part of the poem sucks, but I'll read it. That hell haunts the happiness I feel now, but the light, it makes me forget. I try to remember, but it's fading away until the light getting brighter. Everything is getting brighter, more vibrant. Severe depression is hell on earth. Lifelessness, void, lacking nothing because you have no passion, no love, no feelings of joy, no longings or challenges, no regrets, no loss, no strength, no hate, no desires. And so I, oh, it keeps going. Um, you're the light at the end of my tunnel, Lizzie. Oh, so happy. I hope I can give you guys hope that like this is how I felt two years ago. And it was like so real in my entire life. And now I can read this and I was like, oh, like that's a phase of my life that's gone that I will never be in again because there's medication and I choose to go on medication. And so I lay here, this is bad, like this is bad writing. So content, so free, so safe, kept alive, eternally in the dark, horrible writing list. Okay, to be clear, like this part that I'm like bad writing is not part of the poem. It's like stuff below it that I was like, didn't make the poem. Um, it's dead. The struggle, okay. The struggle is over, but everything is not over. The light from before, it's still here. We're all still here. Oh, this is so dark. We're all still here where we want to be. So everyone wants to be in hell. People, so that's why it's difficult comparing hell to depression. Cause like in depression, like I didn't want to be in depression. My brain was like bipolar depression episode, bam. But this is like the same mindset of depression is what hell is like. And people actually choose that amount of isolation. They choose to be numbed just by going on Instagram and watching Netflix and like not actually having engaging conversations and depth relationships where there's so much vulnerability and where it's scary and you're like family like with everyone in your life people are scared to get close to people they're scared to open up they're scared to be passionate and chase their dreams and be fully alive and so this type of depression mindset of isolation is literally how people live like there are many people i've met who have gone through horrible things in their lives and they don't want to deal with it they don't want to talk about it they don't want to heal from it people even with physical things. I meet people who are like scared to go to the doctor because they just don't like like needles or medicine or like they don't want to talk about it. Like, and so there's literally people who choose to be broken, 
who choose to stay sick. And so it happens on a spiritual level too, where people literally don't want to get healed. People just want to like ruminate in their hurt and not deal with it. And if you have any questions about hell, purgatory, God, torture, that's all answered in that hour long episode by a bishop. Okay, and then I say at the end of the poem, complete negative freedom. So this is a political science thing that like changed my life. Political philosophy classes changed my life. In America, we have a negative freedom society. Everyone is like, don't tell me what to do. I wanna do whatever I want. As long as I'm not harming anyone, I can do whatever I want. If you're addicted to heroin, like I'm so free, I'm doing heroin. No, you're not, you're addicted to heroin. You don't have any free will because you're addicted to that. And so just because we have, we can choose what we have does not mean we're free. And so Christianity is saying, yes, you follow all these rules that your creator gives you of how to flourish. And by following those rules, you're going to be the most free person in the world. You're going to be the most peaceful, chill, relaxed person ever if you follow these rules. That's positive freedom. <laughs>